So we move to setting number two with imperfectly correlated types. And the setting, broadly speaking, is pretty much the same as we had before, as we had right now, or somewhere in between of this setting and the uh, and our standard quasi-linear setting. So we will still live in the quasi-linear world, and players type profile theta of these players has some distribution phi. And here it will be a little more convenient to work with, PDF, with PDFs than with CDFs. But as usual, we can specify both. Uh, designer, again, knows this distribution, does not know the realized types. And these distributions can have any correlation between different uh, elements of this type profile. So individual player types can be correlated in principle. Now the way we actually specified quasi-linear setting initially, and I guess it's useful to restate it, is that all players' beliefs are derived with Bayes' rule, meaning that the belief of player i, phi i, and the weight that it assigns to type profile theta minus i given player's own type theta i is derived as the joint probability phi of these two types of, of this combination of types occurring simultaneously divided by the total probability of type theta i occurring. So the integral over all possible types theta minus i Let's put a prime here, d theta prime minus i. And the domain of integration is big theta minus i. Sorry for writing so small. And if type space is finite, you substitute integral with the sum. The usual thing. Good. And the question is the same, or the goal, is once again we want to implement some allocation rule k of theta. I guess for symmetry let's mention uh, that it maps types, type profiles into outcomes. And once again, implement means find the transfer rule that supports this allocation. So by laws of narrative symmetry, you can guess that the we will achieve this goal, that we will be able to implement arbitrary allocation rule. We will be able to find such transfers even with imperfect correlation uh, between between different player types, and just like with optimal mechanisms, the jump in the setup from monopolistic screening to Meyerson's optimal mechanism was kind of very very small, right? We move from two types to interval of types, and then all hell breaks loose. Here is more or less the same. Once we relax perfect correlation to this imperfect correlation, you need some heavier or artillery to approach this problem. So now, the information that player I has about other players' types is no longer unambiguous. Player I does not know for sure what other players are, what other players' types are, but we can still follow the same path and maybe ask player I to bet on other players' types. Because player I knows the distribution of other players' types better than the designer. Player I has some private information about the distribution of other players' types. And we will focus on extracting this aspect of private information rather than extracting information about player I's preferences, which is what we did before. 
how can we extract this information? There is a tiny example in slides that illustrates the concept of correlation between types. We will skip it and maybe come back to it later. So as I told you, we will be able to implement our key uh, under one condition, which may be slightly difficult to state. But this condition will basically say that every different type of player i has different information about um, other players' types. So as I just said, we will extract information about information. So we need there to be variance in this information. We need types to actually be properly correlated and for every type of player i to have some specific knowledge of other players' types. The actual condition is actually slightly more, slightly stronger than that, slightly stronger than this uniqueness. I will state it in maybe not fully formal way. So the whole mechanism and this condition in particular is due to Kramer and MacLean in their 1988 paper. And so I'll call this condition the kramer maclean condition too. And we will say that our distribution of types phi satisfies this kramer maclean condition if for any player i and for any type of this player beta i, the vector of beliefs Meaning that the vector of these values for all possible types theta minus i. This vector is linearly independent of the combination, sorry, is linearly independent of such vectors for other types theta i. This is how the condition sounds. So this is linearly independent. from the collection of phi i theta i prime where theta i prime is the set of types of layer i minus the actual type theta i. As I said, you can also refer to the slides for the more exact formulation. This is an assumption here. So we will say that if our phi satisfies this condition, then we can achieve our goal. It's a pretty hard assumption. So it's true. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later on. But the idea is you do not need to, there will not be a specific, I guess there will be a specific so rule for constructive transfers. Huh? It's like More or less, yeah. yeah. It's related to full rank requirement. It, it's a full rank requirement for some matrix. Yeah. I think for yeah. For matrix composed of beliefs of player i. But the idea is, even if this condition does not hold in the whole model, even if you cannot fully identify the type of player i just based on the beliefs the player i has about other players' types, then you can still extract this aspect of information as you know, the first step towards implementation. Yeah. And then in the second step, you can use all the toolbox that we had for independent types. Yeah. So you can do this in a two-stage mechanism. And then, yeah, rely on information about player eyes preferences. So maybe, yeah. The slides define what linear independence means. But if you, uh, if, if linear algebra class was a little too long ago, the linear independence means that this vector cannot be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. So you have a bunch of vectors here, one for every theta i prime, and you take vector for one type with one weight, vector for another type with another weight, and so on. You sum them all together, and you cannot get this phi i, irrespective of the weights you take. Intuitively. So as I said, the main idea of uh, of this condition, like the 70% maybe of this condition, 
is that player I's belief, first of all, it does not coincide, player I's, sorry, belief, given sum of his type, does not coincide with the belief that he would have if he, if he was of some other type. So basically, your belief is unique to your type. So is your type. Yes. You can have two different types, and these two different types must have different beliefs. Yeah. This is what the condition says. So recall that this condition is very violated in independent uh, type setting, because there your beliefs about other players' types are the same for all of your types. Here we're saying that not only your beliefs may sometimes be different, but your beliefs must be different for every type of your own. And then, you know, there is some more the actual linear independence condition. So it's, it's slightly stronger than what I said. But what I said is what I wanted to take away from this condition. So full rank is one way to interpret. Uh, let's, let's, let's practice actually using this, this condition. And then we'll take a break. And then we'll see how it works. So let's take two very simple examples. One, both with two players. One with two by two, so two, two types for every player. And let's say one sixth, one third, one third, one sixth. So this is the distribution of type profiles. Meaning that type profile, the realized type profile is HH with probability 1 over 6, HL with probability 1 over 3, and so on. My question to you is Does this phi satisfy Kramer McLean condition? How would you even approach this problem? So first of all, what you need to do is, is you can look at full rank of this matrix. This is one way uh, you can do that. And those of you who know what it is can see that this matrix is actually full rank. But if we try to apply this condition literally, we would want to derive player's beliefs. So let's look at player one, for example, and let's look at what are the beliefs of this player depending on this player's types. So, phi 1 regarding theta 2 given theta 1 is, so first of all, what is this object? This is a pair of probabilities. So, player 1 assigns some probability to player 2 being of high type and some probability to player 2 being of low type. What are these probabilities? And... Um, can somebody tell me that? One third and two thirds. It will seem a little confused, so let's uh, take a dive into the base room. So let's see how we obtained one third. Yes, uh, yes, oh, sorry, I meant, I said that I wrote a different thing as usual. Yeah. Now people are even more confused. <laughs> let's definitely do that. Uh, okay, just in terms of logistics on the board, let me let us actually derive the two-thirds instead. So how do we get the two-thirds? From Bayes' rule, the probability that player 1 assigns to player 2 of being low type, given that player 1 is high type, is the probability according to the distribution of this type profile arising, uh, arising period, so phi LH, divided by the total probability of player one having high type. So phi of LH, I guess I should write HL. Player one is type H, player two is type L. HL plus phi H, H. And if we just plug in the numbers, 1 over 6 divided by 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. Uh, this is 1 over 3 in the numerator. 
All right, cool, yeah. Base rule, something that we use every day in economics. So this is the profile of beliefs of player one if he has a high type. Now very quickly, if player one has low type, then his beliefs are it's just the other way around. Exactly. <laughs> Two thirds for high type. I, I'm not careful about my handwriting today. Two thirds at the top, one third at the bottom. Nothing to panic about. <clears throat> and so why did we derive this belief? Why did I torture you again with Bayes rule? We need to see whether these beliefs satisfy this condition. In particular, is vector of beliefs, so vector one third, two thirds, for a player one of type H, is it linearly independent of the collection of vectors of beliefs of player one or all other types of player one? So basically, is this vector linearly independent of this vector? This is equivalent to asking of whether this is a multiple of this. And it is obviously not. So these are linearly independent. You can verify the same thing for player two, but it'll just be the same thing. Good, good, good. Let's do a very... I'll, I'll, I'll state another example. I'll not torture you with it. Um, but if we say that our type distribution is, is instead like this. 1 12th, 1 6th, 1 6th, 1 12th, uh, 1 4th, 1 4th. So now player 2 can have three different types. So we say that types are jointly determined by this phi. Okay. So phi is the distribution of the whole type profile. But yeah, this distribution does not need to be symmetric in general across across players. And if you if you quickly if you are quick at determining whether a matrix matrix has full rank, well here full rank does not make sense because it's not a square matrix. But what you can notice is that for player two's beliefs about player one's type, there will be linear, linearly dependent columns. You can express this middle belief as linear combination of belief of the high type and belief of the low type. I will not go deeper into this, but I will. if it's not obvious, I would like you to sit at home, carefully derive all of these beliefs, take the definition of linear independence from the slides, and apply it. I guess it will never hold for a 3 by 2 example. You can never have... I'm rusty on my linear algebra, but you're right. Actually, if you get an another homework example, take any distribution of a 3 by 2 matrix and show that uh, it will automatically fail kramer maclean condition. That the beliefs will be linearly dependent. So how does it help us? Uh, I guess it's, well, I already told you how it helps us. It allows us to focus on extracting player I's information rather than trying to extract both information about player I's information and information about player I's preferences. So we can focus directly on that. And then our problem is exactly trying to find out what beliefs player I has. About other players types and I would like to frame that as a problem in itself so a separate problem information elicitation problem again it is disjoint it is related to what we're doing but I will frame it in a way that is disjoint so we have a state of the world omega in big omega we have an expert who knows the distribution of the state. 
expert knows true distribution pi of omega. The principal, the designer, knows neither the state nor the distribution of the state of the world. And the expert is also ignorant of the true state. An expert only knows the distribution of the state. And so question is, how can the designer incentivize, how can the designer design transfers to incentivize the expert to reveal pi truthfully, to report pi truthfully? So you can see that this is exactly our problem now. In our problem, the expert is player i. The state is the type profiles of other players. And uh, this distribution of other players' types is the, is the distribution of other players' types from the perspective of player i, given the private information of their type. So we want to make the expert report for our truth by truthfully. Uh, tr and transfers can be contingent on the realization of the state. So the transfer will de depend on expert's report and the realized state. So if there are no questions about the problem, I will give you the solution. I will not derive the solution, but I will show you the solution. And we will talk a little bit about why it is indeed the solution. So we will check it. So, the answer is the principal can try. So the transfers that depend on the expert's report pi hat, this is distribution, and the realized state omega will be given by minus log of pi hat of omega. So minus logarithm of the probability that the expert's report assigns to the state that came out. So this is how much we will pay to the expert uh, whenever the state realizes. So basically, do not have an allocation in this problem. It is not really a mechanism design problem. But we can design transfers, and we are looking for transfers which will make it, I guess, strictly optimal in this problem to report the truthful distribution by head. So the expert reports some distribution of states by head, and we want this report to be truthful. So what I'm saying is that these transfers do the job. If you pay to the agent the amount in dollars, which is the log of the probability by head that his report assigns to the state omega that actually realized, this will make it strictly optimal for the expert to report the true distribution pi. Yeah. Isn't it weird that the transfer is contingent on the actual realized state omega? So the, maybe uh, I'll give you an example and it will be a little clearer. So think of betting on um, the elections. The US elections, that I guess the relevant example. You have an expert, the 538 or whoever else, who knows that some distribution from their perspective of which candidates will win. So 15% probability that Trump wins, 85% probability that Biden wins. And we want to learn what that um, belief is. And if we say, you know what, after the election, once we will see who has won, we will pay you this amount, depending on what you reported and who actually won. So this transfer state yeah, after the state has realized. In our problem, we pay to the agents after we learn the reports of everybody else as well. Right? So also once we learn the other player steps. OK, still confused. Every player will get a transfer. In our problem, yes. So here we are now looking at just one expert with one a belief about one state. In, what we will do in our problem is that we will apply this logic to all players of all types. 
So this transfer will also be contingent on player I's own type, whichever they report, right? Because that will also be determined by head. Uh, yeah, but we'll get to that. So let's think about the experts who will predict the elections. Anna-Maria? Yes, exactly. So we are framing this as a bet. We would like our players to bet on other players' types. And we are asking, well, what kind of bet would player with type theta i and a given belief about other players' types, what bet would this type prefer uh, if we present a menu of di many different bets, for example? In this problem, we do not, well, it's a bit of a dual problem. We allow the expert to make any, to report any distribution by hat. In our problem, it's slightly more constrained. So we only allow a player to report one of their types, which means that they, they can only report one of the set of uh, beliefs, but not any kind of belief about other players. So this is a more general problem, but if these transfers will work here, they will also work for our players. So let's see whether our expert will choose to report the truth under these transfers, if this is the bet. So what is the expert's problem? Let us write it down and actually solve it and see that truth telling is the solution. The expert's problem is to maximize over report by hat, which again here can be any distribution over states, big omega, to maximize over by hat the expected pair. So the expected transfer t that the player will get. Yeah, uh, so maximum over by hat, which is an element of the distribution of the set of distributions over a set of states big omega. So this triangle is delta, you know, set of distributions over this. And we maximize the expectation over states omega, conditional on the expert's true belief pi. And inside the expectation, we have the amount of money that the player receives. So negative of the amount of money that the expert pays to the mechanism, so minus t. And this t is uh, contingent on the report by hat and on the realized state omega. So we can rewrite this by just plugging in this transfer rule as follows. Max over by hat. Of the sum. Let's suppose that the set of states is finite, just for, for a second, for, writing, for the sake of writing this down. So the sum over all possible states of the probability that the expert's belief assigns to this state times the payment that the expert will receive in that state. So minus of minus log, we just log of pi hat of omega. Maximizing over the set of distributions is a little ugly, so let's pose this as a constraint. So the constraint that pi hat must be a distribution is the same as saying that pi hat is just a vector of length of the same length as the number of states, and every element of that state is between 0 and 1. And the sum over all states, omega, of all pi hats must be equal to 1. OK, this is a problem that we can solve. Let's just ignore this constraint, that it, everything should be between 0 and 1. Let's focus on the objective function and this one equality constraint. Let's write down this maximization problem as a Lagrangian and solve it. And that will be more or less the last thing we'll do today. So the Lagrangian is 
the objective functions of the sum over states big omega of pi of omega times log of pi hat of omega minus Lagrange multiplier lambda times the constraint sum of omega in big omega pi hat of omega minus 1 must be equal to 0. And what do we do then with our Lagrangians? We take first order conditions. Meaning we take derivative of this thing with respect to pi hat and we equalize it to 0. So let's fix some state omega. Then the first order condition with respect to pi hat of omega, of this omega, will be equal to pi of omega times derivative of log with respect to this is 1 over this times 1 over pi hat of omega minus lambda. This should be equal to zero altogether. Let me use this space. So this is the same as saying that pi of omega over pi hat of omega must be equal to lambda. And this is true for arbitrary omega, meaning that this equality holds for all omegas. So pi of, of some other state omega prime divided by pi hat of the same state omega prime should be equal to the same lambda. And so if we then look closely at these first order conditions, which should give us the solution to uh, the problem of choosing pi hat, you'll see that these ratios, pi over pi hat, should be constant over states. The only thing that that can hold, and we can at the same time satisfy our constraint that all of these sum up to 1, is if pi hat equals to pi. Pi hat of omega equals to pi of omega for any omega. This comes from this equality that should hold for any omega in the omega prime. And the fact that pi hat should sum up to 1, and the fact that pi's sum up to 1. From these equalities, you get that pi hat must be equal to pi times some constant alpha. Ah, lambda. Let's actually make it lambda 1 over lambda times pi. And then the only lambda that works is 1. So we showed that our guess of these transfers does indeed work for our information elicitation problem. And that is what we can use for our kramer maclean problem. In particular, what we can do with our original problem is we can use these logs in transfers for every type of every player. So what we can do in back to Kramer McLean problem is we can set transfers ti of theta i, so transfer the player i phase to the mechanism when they report theta i, and actually when other players report theta minus i, we can write that as, I forgot to say the theorem for Kramer McLean. Uh, let's, say, let's actually do that really quickly. 
because there is one one more aspect to the Kramer Maclean result that I did not tell you about, and it's it's kind of cool. I want to tell you about it. And this theorem goes as follows: If our distribution phi satisfies the condition that we stated for any mechanism kt there exists a Bayesian incentive compatible direct revelation mechanism I guess this was for any direct revelation mechanism Uh, there exists a Bayesian incentive compatible direct relation mechanism KT prime such that this Bayesian incentive compatible mechanism gives exactly the same expected transfer to all players and actually to all types of all players such that the expectation over theta minus i of Ti prime of theta given theta i and this is the theorem so as I told you we can implement any k so this initial k in the initial mechanism was arbitrary but not only that we can also pair that k with any profile of expected transfers for every player meaning we get interim IR for free or we can actually extract a lot of money from every player if we don't have IR. So any profile of expected transfers is implementable in combination with any key. So it's even cooler than that. And so what we can do is uh, construct this T prime as follows. Just going back to the proof, quote unquote, of this theorem. We can construct these transfers as the original transfers plus two new terms. So plus some constant, C i1, and then minus this information revelation term, C i2. Uh, C i2 times log of phi i theta minus i given theta i okay so very quickly the idea is exactly the same right we do, we want to use this transfer to extract player i's information about their belief about theta minus i and this belief is specific to type theta i so different types theta i will have different beliefs so different reports of player i will mean different bits the idea is that we want to set the CI2 very high so that this is the dominant term so that player I effectively chooses his report based on this term and then if we make it the, if we make the CI2 large enough it will really overshadow any incentives that are the original T provided and then we can use the CI1 constant to just adjust the averages now this is not the complete proof because here, uh, by adjusting CI1, you can only get the exante expected profits, exante expected transfers to be equal, just the expectation over theta of T prime of theta equal to the exante expectation of T of theta. To get this equality of interim expected transfers, you will have to do a little more to acquire the slightly heavier machinery, so you can read the proof in the textbook. It uses Fargo Slam. If you know what this is, I don't really know. So that will be it for today. We covered kramer maclean mechanism. Just to maybe, uh, before you go, quickly conclude this part and what we did today is we saw that whenever players types are correlated, it's really, 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 really easy to exploit that correlation to provide incentives. So we can force players to bid, to bid 
on each other's types. And this is kind of um, sufficient to provide a lot of incentives, to provide a lot of leverage for a lot of incentives. Next time, we will see that it even goes beyond this. It goes, we do not even need transfers to use that, to use this uh, idea. So we will look at a simple communication problem where the principal has no access to transfers. The principal cannot commit to a allocation rule and yet perfect uh, relationships. 